once again to our show called Real Shame. It's a show where we watch movies, us two guys. We watch movies that's maybe new to one of us, maybe new to both of us. And then we sit right down here, we push record on the camera, and we just blabber on about it and random other tangents for about 20 or so minutes. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. Uh, so this week we're watching some movies from my list of shame, movies that I haven't seen. And to introduce the first of the pair of movies, I'm going to pass it over to Andy to tell you all about it. Yeah, Christmas may be over, but we're still in December. So a shoplifter has nowhere to go for Christmas while out on bail. And so the kindly attorney assigned to prosecute her takes her to his hometown for the holidays in Remember the Night. That was a dirty trick you played on me. It means another day in court. I'm not working for the state. I have to earn my money. No sense of humor. Merry Christmas, Francis. Oh, if that wasn't the neatest fake reverse I ever saw. Yeah, you fell for that one like a horse down a coal hole. A fine mess you got me into. I thought I was going to be out of here for Christmas. Well, all I got to do is post a bond. How can I post a bond? I haven't any more money, and I don't want to spend Christmas in jail. Please don't let them do that. What do you mean you haven't got any more money? What have I been talking for, to hear my own voice? If you hadn't talked so much, I'd be out of here by now. Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, hypnotism. That gag's so old, it's got whiskers. Please don't let them keep me here over Christmas. Well, what could you do if you were out? You haven't got any money. I could walk around, couldn't I? It ain't gonna be as bad as all that. You'll get a nice little room yeah, and a nice yeah, turkey Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind the build-up. He thinks he's taking me to the Ritz. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Do you remember? Do you remember? All right, so Remember the Night came out in 1940, way back in the day. Actually, it didn't come out in December. It came out in January of 1940. They missed they missed it by a month. Yeah. Uh, it was directed by Mitchell Leeson. Mitchell Leeson directed movies like Death Takes a Holiday, which I believe stars Frederick March. You may not have seen it. Which holiday does Death take? Uh, I don't know what holiday he takes. I think he just takes a bank holiday. Okay. But... <laughs> You, you may not have seen Dead Takes a Holiday, but chances are you might have seen its remake, which is Meet Joe Black. Oh, I have seen it. Mitchell Leeson also directed movies like Hold Back the Dawn and Captain Carey, USA. This movie, Remember the Night, was written by Preston Sturges. Preston Sturges, very acclaimed writer, comedy writer, and director. Uh, he didn't Again, he did not direct this film. It was directed by Mitchell Leeson, but he did write it. But this is actually, I believe, the last film that he wrote and directed after this. He, he, or I'm sorry, this is the last wrote. film that he purely wrote. After this, he wrote and directed all of his films. He's like, I don't like what these guys are doing. You're exactly right. Yeah, I'm going to do like, it myself. I'm, I can I'm, do it better. I, I'm, I'm Thanos. I'm going to do it myself. Uh, he, he, Yeah, he, he, he got tired of people butchering his screenplays. <laughs> so from this point on, everything he wrote, he also directed. So he's like, yeah, screw you. But Preston Sturges directed and wrote movies like The Lady Eve, Sullivan's Travels, The Palm Beach Story, and one of, if not the very first, legacy sequel ever made, The Sin of Harold Diddlebach. I think it came out in like 1947, and the original film, The Freshman, came out in 1925. Wow. So yeah, 20, I think I think it was 20, a 22-year gap between those We have those him films. to blame for, all, for Top Gun Maverick and for all those legacy everything, yeah, yeah, blame or, or love. Uh, <laughs> we, we have him to blame for movies like uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, but we have him to thank for movies, I think, like Tom, Top Gun Maverick. That's right. Uh, so Remember the Night stars Barbara Stanwyck as Lee Leander and Fred McMurray as John Sargent. Where have we seen these two before? Oh, that's right. We saw the pairing of them in Double Indemnity yeah. as Phyllis Diedrichson and Walter Neff, although they're not nearly as evil in this film. In fact, they're not evil at all. Uh, uh, although Barbara Stanwyck is a shoplifter, so yeah. she, she's bad. But yes, it's, it's kind of interesting. Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray that were in Double Indemnity. Of course, that was in 1944. That was four years after this, but they were paired together. In this film, Remember the Night, Beulah Bondi plays Fred McMurray's mother, Mrs. Sargent. You'll recognize Beulah Bondi from It's a Wonderful Life. She, I believe, is Jimmy Stewart's mother in that film. Sterling Holloway plays Willie Sims. Great name. Elizabeth Patterson plays Aunt Emma. And Willard Robinson plays the other attorney in the film, Francis X. O'Leary. Not Francis X. Bushman. Francis X. O'Leary. So it's a movie that I have never seen. All right. And you have never seen. I've never seen it. But I knew that it was a Christmas movie, and I wanted to go ahead and do it this year because we did Double Indemnity a few months ago. I thought it'd be cool to see these two actors again. Yeah. So I put it on the list, and it's Christmas time and all that stuff, so I thought it was perfect. But 
Since it's your week, you get to tell us, did you know anything about Remember the Night? Obviously, you're familiar with Barbara Stanwyck and Frederick Murray since we just did Double Indemnity. Yes. But did you, you didn't know anything about Remember the Night, so you went into it blind. And what did you think? Did it give you that Christmas spirit? Or were you like, bah humbug, yeah. this sucks? Uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily <laughs> bah humbug. I don't think they have the same chemistry that they had in Double Indemnity. I'll be curious to see yeah. if you feel the same way or if I'm alone in that. Um, I... Uh, it's for me it, the 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 premise of the movie made it really kind of it, it was hard for it, to, it didn't sit well with me mm-hmm. and it's just it just it just seems so odd like the 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 kicking off point and you know you know with some movies you know I mean, I like superhero movies and obviously none of that stuff's realistic but the fact that he's it's like not? yeah <laughs> uh, I have I have something people to tell can't you. fly <laughs> what. <laughs> I uh so even so the premise is that you know he's trying this uh, he gets pulled into this trial to uh convict this lady who's who's been uh, caught stealing she has a criminal record this is not her first at it mm-hmm. and he feels bad and it, basically he wants to delay the case so he can enjoy the holiday and not have to necessarily work it and in doing so he realizes that he probably made this lady miss her whole holiday Feel sorry for pays the bails bondsman to take her out and then basically takes her on a road trip with him to his family and stuff like that. Yeah. And I find that a little, it's a little hard for me to swallow and I don't know exactly what it is, but for me that just kind of like, it just seemed too odd for me to kind of to swallow too out of the norm. I don't know why it necessarily did that, but it did. So so it kind of had an uphill climb with that. I, I would have been better if he flew. Yeah, it would have like picked her up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, if he picked her up, if he uh, shot snapped, lasers out of his eyes, shot lasers out of his eyes, that would have been okay. Snapped his fingers, the jail <laughs> disappeared. I don't know. At, at a at a at a suit made out of nanobots coming out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, uh, so that so that that's kind of that's kind of where it is now, and it just seems very odd. I mean, uh, you know, not to spoil what the movie we're gonna do this is, but it's another Preston Sturgis movies. And it seems like he has a very like, he wants to hit at things in a very quirky way. Or at least a couple of movies I've seen mm-hmm. this week seem like they're kind of odd and and off the beaten path a little bit, a little a little quirky, I guess I would say. So, uh, so I'm I'm with that. I like that. You know, I know with when we did um, when we did some of these kind of uh, like uh, wacky kind of comedies from the era, like we did. Um, like bringing a baby, bringing a baby and stuff. I had a big issue with the the female character and finding her annoying, and I didn't find Barbara Strandwick annoying at all in this movie. Yeah, which I was pleasantly surprised because I was kind of worried that she was going to be a grading to me and all that kind of stuff. But I found her interesting, and I liked it when they kind of settled in at the home and all that kind of stuff. For me, it's kind of hard to see how far John Sargent would come around to wanting this lady in his life and wanting to marry her and even taking her up to Canada and being like, you can leave now and you won't have to come back on the bail, the bail bond and all that kind of stuff. Like the love story doesn't feel like it's, it's been put through its paces enough to make me feel like they actually did. Yeah. Fall in but love with old movies like this, they yeah, fall in like, love in like a day. Yeah. So you just kind of have to go with that. So, it, so that's really, so that's been interesting and uh, stuff like that. And like the whole like rigmarole of getting to the town of them, like, you know, sleeping in the cow pasture and all that stuff. I could have done without that. I don't think that really added to me, to my enjoyment of the movie, Mm -hmm. but you know, so I'm kind of, I'm torn on it a little bit just because uh, there's aspects of it. I like, and you know, I like the two actors again. I think they have more chemistry and double indemnity, but uh, you know, uh, there's other things that kind of, uh, I, I don't really care for that. I feel like don't really add much to my enjoyment of the movie. So I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of all over the map a little bit. I, you know, it's like, it reminds me of like movies that come, have come after this, like the proposal with Ryan Reynolds and, and Sandra Bullock kind of has the same kind of feeling to it and stuff like that. And, you know, they probably obviously looked at movies like this and have, have kind of done that. And I feel like that does it a little bit better, but that might be my bias because it's a more modern telling of this kind of story and stuff like that. But I feel like if we did more of them in town falling in love would have worked more for me rather than kind of like him picking her up crazy zany stuff in the car 
then they're you know at his parents house and then they fall in love and then you know her parents are like you got to marry her and he's like i don't know and then he's like oh i do love you and i'm like i don't know so i'm kind of i'm torn with it i guess is where i am i don't know i'm i'm still grappling with my feelings on the, on the movie as a whole apparently you'll figure it out by new year hopefully <laughs> Uh, I just need, I just need, if he could fly, I mean, it would have been a, a shoe win for me, right? Damn it. Apparently. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of where I am with Remember the Night. Uh, I think there's some good there. There's some not stuff that I enjoyed in it. So, that's, that's kind of where I fall on it. What about you? So, you said you never seen it before. Did you know, what did you know? And you didn't know much. I didn't know much about it. I mean, I, I, I only became aware of this film in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because you feel like, especially with, with old, I mean, nowadays we have so many movies that come out in a given year. There's a ton of Christmas movies that I'm not aware of that have come out like in the last yeah. five years. In Hallmark movies and stuff that I couldn't care less about as well. But there's a lot of stuff like that. But m m old movies like this, there's not that many. And so you feel like you probably know about all the old Christmas movies. Obviously, you've got the staples like Miracle on 34th Street, movies that we've done on the show, It's a Wonderful Life, whatever, Christmas in Connecticut, you know, stuff like that. You, you feel like you've heard of all these, but this one has has passed me by. I mean, it really has. It's It, it, it definitely fits for our show, Real Shame, because I'd never heard of it until the last year or two. Um, but I, I saw it, I, or I, I, saw, I read the premise of it, and I thought, how have I not seen this, like yeah. on on TCM or something like that. So I was going into it pretty blind. I, I don't mind how he ends up taking her home to his hometown for the holidays because I was like, how is this going to work? Like how yeah. is this guy is going to prosecute her? How in the world are they going to wind up going home together? Oh, like yeah. that's really weird. So also I, I thought it was hilarious nowadays no way stuff would move that fast like she gets arrested and is like put on trial like the next yeah, day yeah. Yeah, like that, that would never happen they definitely now. had like habeas corpus back then <laughs> yeah nowadays I mean, it'd be months yeah oh yeah easily it'd be yeah. like you're gonna okay so you've been arrested right before christmas you're going on trial next summer yeah, yeah. the judge yeah, would already be on break yeah he wouldn't yeah. have to worry about it the judge this, would be like it's like the same day yeah. his boss is calling him like hey i got a girl a girl i want yeah. you to prosecute they're gonna get you know whatever so i thought that was funny like that was comical how quickly uh you know she got put on trial or whatnot but um I, I was like how is he gonna wind up taking her home that's really odd and so as you said he's like oh i feel kind of bad because she's gonna be in jail rotting in you know over the holidays so i'll go and you know uh, this bail bondsman guy will get a favor from him yeah. and he'll let her out but the bail bondsman mistakenly thinks he wants to, to spring in for him. Like, yeah. so he drops well, that's her what off. She thinks too. Yeah. She drop. he drops her off at, at Fred, uh, Fred McMurray's apartment. And so Fred McMurray's like, uh, well, I guess you can, you're from what they're both yeah. from Indiana or something. Right. Yeah. yeah He's yeah. like, Oh, so you can just, you can come home. I'll drop you off at your house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So that's the original intention. Yeah, yeah. She's just going to get a ride with him. And then of course her mom is like, I hate you. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. You're She's, dead to me. Yeah, you're dead to me. Her mom's very cold. Her uh, mom's like, you voted liberal, you're dead to me. <laughs> you're dead to me. I can't believe you. Disgraceful. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that all of that stuff is very meandering. Uh, you know, getting broke down in the pasture, milking the cow. By the way, you don't milk. I'm not a farmer, but you don't get milk straight out of a cow and just drink it, right? I, I mean, I, I thought, to, to, well... Does it taste that good? I always heard that you have to like do some stuff to it, I don't it, think right? you have to. Well, it's not pasteurize, pasteurize it or something? It, yeah, yeah. I, you I may not you have only, to, but yeah. I don't think it tastes that great if you get it straight from the cow, does it? I, I think you can. I, I mean, I'm not saying you can't, but how would it taste? I, I think I it feel tastes like it's the same. Not, I don't know about that. Well, I think pasteurization just I thought that was bacteria. odd that they were yeah. just like, yeah, we're going to squirt some yeah. milk into a cup. But it, nevertheless, I may be wrong. And they maybe, set maybe, fire to the small they, courtroom. Yeah, because I kept thinking that stuff's going to come into play later. They're going to see those guys again, and it's going to come you know like i yeah. thought it was going to come back around no it yeah. doesn't and so yeah all that stuff just seems kind of pointless i mean the part where she goes to her mother's house you need that yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, her you see her mom is like i don't want to have anything to do with you so now she really has nowhere to go he can't drive her back to new york or wherever yeah. they're at or i can't remember if they're chicago new york whatever but uh he can't drive her all the way back there so he's like all right well i guess you're gonna have to come home with me well, that part of the movie I like. I mean, because I like that whole we're home for the holidays. Yeah. I'm here with my mother. We're sitting around. We're playing the piano. We're eating popcorn. We're going to go do the hoedown on Friday yeah. night and all that kind of stuff. I liked all that stuff. So I, I'm kind of in the middle as far as the movie goes. I don't think it's amazing. 
I think it's I think it's interesting, and I think that certainly if you've never seen this film before and you like Christmas movies and you like things like It's a Wonderful yeah. Life and Miracle on 34th Street, I would say give this one a try. This is not some Christmas classic to me. Yeah. I just thought it was okay, but I think there's enough of it with the stuff with them at his mom's house and all that stuff that was heartwarming and whatnot that, I mean, I would say I liked it overall. I didn't love it. It, it doesn't hold a candle to some of those other movies that I mentioned. Yeah. But it's it's okay. I but thought I'm with you. I'm with you in the fact that I think the stuff with her at his parents' house is the best stuff. Yeah. And I wish the movie maximized that. Maximalized that. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the setup could have been done away with. And if we got maybe she like hit out in his car when she stole something, and then he's driving back, and then he bumps into her, and then she kind of make up a story. And you can get there a lot quicker than having that whole courtroom stuff. Yeah. And then we didn't even talk about him like throwing the trial at the end and yeah. stuff like that to kind of get her off, which, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, you don't like need that. it. I, yeah. that, that's another thing I, I don't like. So so maybe I'm not as favorable on the movie yeah. <laughs> because I had forgotten about that. Yeah, I don't like the ending. Um, the, the ending, so we mentioned, again, when we did Double Indemnity, Back in the 1944, they were not going to get away with it. Yeah. There's no way. The Hayes Code was like, absolutely not. They are both going to get their comeuppance. So they, you know, as as opposed to um, The Last Seduction, which we paired with, she gets away with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, but in Double Indemnity back then, they couldn't get away with it. And I feel like The Hayes Code was the same way with this movie. They're like, she's not, she shoplifted. She's going to go down for it. Like, yeah. there's no way she's getting out of it. Nowadays, if this movie was remade, she would get out of it. Yeah. And they would fall in love, you know, they would kiss as the, you know, whatever something like that but this movie just has a bizarre ending because he's trying to get her off and then she's like no i did it put me in jail yeah like, and then basically like, so they put her in jail yeah. and then he goes in there to see her in jail and they talk about well you're gonna go away for a while but maybe we can be together and i think they kind of like embrace and that's the end yeah. it's like kind of a downer <laughs> it's not really yeah, again not if Christmas-y. it was remade now sandra bullock and ryan reynolds or whoever would be like you know oh i love you yeah, and that would be it would be like and and you know something would have happened where she would get off she would be magically acquitted yeah. or whatever none of that happens ryan in reynolds would fly away with her in his arms yeah as green stuff. lantern it's whatever, green whatever. Lantern, no, yeah. yeah no but i mean <laughs> it's just so weird i mean this movie has such a bizarre ending and i get it for the time period yeah. i understand because I, I really do think the hayes office was like nope She's gonna, she's, she's going down. That's yeah. it. But because of that, it just gives the movie kind of a sour ending yeah. for a holiday film. And yeah, I agree. And this movie has some really weird of its time kind of stuff, like Rufus, which I is saw, that's awful, very yeah, but, problematic but, yeah. these days. And also, I would say Willie is pretty problematic too in the way he's kind of rendered and shown on the screen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not as troublesome to me as, as, the, as the other Rufus character. for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, the uh he's i am surprised on how bad of a driver fred murray is like when they're like leaving at night stuff i'm like this guy they're really showing he's, he's having he was having a little drinky guess, drink at, at, the, at the at the at the, di- the the restaurant that they yeah. were at maybe he had a little, little yeah, he too much. must have because he was a terrible driver yeah, yeah. It, for me it's it, i'm like you i just i'm torn because i think if it maximalized the stuff of her in his house the fish out of water the stuff like that would have been much more interesting than all the stuff that kind of um, bookends it. And also, it's kind of weird that he takes like a thief to his parents' house. I'd be like, don't steal anything. Uh, or, you know what you I mean? Klepto. Yeah, because she's like, like one time she like picks up that silver portrait or stuff. I'm like, oh, she's going to steal yeah. stuff in the house. That's going to be he interesting. He turns to his mom. He's like, hi, the good shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But none <laughs> of that happens. Yeah. They immediately are just smitten with her when they see her. I guess they thought... You know, Francis McMurray or Fred McMurray was never going to get married at all. So they're like, oh, you brought a girl home? Okay, you're getting married. Yeah. You're having hey, kids. It's okay. She stole. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. She's stealing your heart. Yeah. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't, again, I don't think this is necessarily a, some long lost Christmas classic, but I would say give it a go if you like Christmas movies and if you like old movies. This is a, a, a good union of the two. But yeah, it's, it's a little bizarre. Um, I mean, I'm still kind of just in the middle with it, but yeah, yeah I definitely i I was hoping to like it a lot more. So unfortunately, I, I uh, so where do you feel like their chemistry? You think it's about the same as Double Indemnity, or yeah, well, I mean, it's it's obviously different because they're yeah. you know they're 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 a lot seedier. Um, I I think I can see what you're saying. I I I, I guess seeing them in that and then seeing them in, the, in this, they don't have as torrid uh, chemistry yeah. as they do in that film. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, I, I think I can see that. So, um, we're we're kind of I'm I'm more you're you're mixed, and I'm a little less favorable yeah. on this movie. Where where are the critics on the, on this bad boy? I didn't write down how many actual reviewers there were. I probably should have, but it is a hundred percent fresh wow. Wow. on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, but I would imagine there's not that many reviews, yeah. critics reviews. It's eighty four percent audience. Leonard Malton gives it three and a half stars. Now this movie has been released on Blu Ray twice before. Once I think by like TCM there for a hot minute had their own kind of label that they oh. had Blu-rays coming out on. Although I don't think they ever made that many, but it came out as like a TCM Blu-ray and then it came out just as a regular Blu-ray. I think literally as when this episode airs, maybe like a week ago, it had a deluxe uh, indicator Blu-ray release come out, which is I've never heard of indicator. Really? It's a UK label as far okay. as I know. Um, I don't know what all bells and whistles it has on it, but I know it's just some kind of deluxe set that came out. So if you're a big fan of this movie, watch for the indicator, Im- import the indicator. That is, if you're in the States, yeah. it comes with the bracelet she stole. It might. <laughs> I don't know. It might. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. Well, that's remember the night. You know, I would say if you're curious, check it out. You might, yeah, you might yeah. enjoy it. I mean, again, the, 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 the list of, old Christmas movies is pretty short. Yeah. Uh, so this adds to that if you've not yeah. seen it. Check it out. Yeah, every year Hallmark triples the amount of Christmas movies oh, made God, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it's nice to see an older one and yeah. watch it. Even if it's not amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, it's Monday, and on these Monday episodes, we always like to talk about what we've been watching. Uh, you did it last week, so I'm going to do it this week. Uh, there's it. one thing I wanted to call out that I've been watching do you remember in the 1990s... Do you do I remember the night? Do I you, do. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the night? No. Do you remember back in 1990s, Pepsi Points and the Pepsi Points catalog? Where you can collect Pepsi Points and you can do things like buy a jacket, buy a oh, basketball. Yeah. Yes. And uh, even and buy... And I think I know where you're going with this. Yes. Even yes. buy a Harrier Jet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so I will say I don't think I remembered Pepsi Points until seeing yeah. what you're. I didn't even watch it, but I've seen what you're about to yeah. talk about. Yes. So uh, uh, obviously there's a new docu series out on Netflix. The four four episodes, which is way too much for this series. Uh, what Netflix has stuff that's too long. Uh, no, oh no! Surprise! You're kidding surprise. Me. Yeah. Uh, all their movies are too long, and all of their series are too long. I don't know opinion. if. It, yeah, I agree. I don't know if it's called Where's My Jet or Dude's Where My Je- Where's My Jet, but I always think of it as Dude Where's My Jet. Hey, it, it's Dude Where's My Jet now. Yeah, as far as we're concerned, it's a it's a it's a documentary about the kid that saw that Harrier jet at the end of the commercial and hatched a plan to be able to get said jet, all kinds of stuff. And I find that interesting. Yeah. Um, like I find that idea interesting and stuff like that. I think it would have been better served as a 90-minute movie. I think there's some things that could be cleaned up and all that kind of stuff. The documentary does this one thing that I think they thought would be really funny or interesting, and it's not, where they basically, also from the 90s, remember the Pepsi challenge where you taste Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Yeah. So every time they bring a new person, new talking head to talk to, they give them two empty co- or two covered... Two cups that have one is Pepsi, one is Coke, and they choose which one they like the best, and all that kind of stuff. And they're keeping like a running tally of that. Okay. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it's as interesting as they What's thought the it would. What's the point? It's because of the Pepsi challenge, I believe. Like, so they're just like, we're going to give everybody in this documentary the Pepsi challenge. Yes, pretty much. Do they do anything with that information? They just show it on the screen and they keep a running tally. That's stupid. Yeah, I mean. it, it doesn't work. So I mean, parts of this movie is really interesting, or parts of the series is really interesting. I like the story behind it, but again. It could have been told more succinctly. I think it would have had more resonance to it. But again, like you alluded to, it being Netflix, they just want those view hours. So they're going to yeah. stuff it full of whatever they can, including the Pepsi Challenge, I bet, mm. to make it all that kind of stuff. It, it brings in a lot of the people that are part of it, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, there's some parts of it that I find really interesting, especially parts where they're talking to the admin that were coming up with the ad and stuff like that. And the behind the scenes stuff, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I would want to watch a whole kind of like um, the, the the console wars documentary that I watched a while back 
where they kind of talked about Sega versus Nintendo's marketing and how Sega wanted to be this adolescent, edgy kind of marketing. Like, I would like to watch a a documentary about, like, what Pepsi and Coke were doing in advertising and how they were trying to one-up all each other like that. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. So, and those aspects, I find it really interesting. But overall, I think the documentary is okay. It's the middle of the road. Kirby, at the end of it, uh, I'm not going to spoil what the outcome was, was and even in real life, but Kirby's like, why are we watching this anyways? Mm. She was very like off-footed by the final uh, result of the of what happened to real life and the fact that they made a series out of it. So I was like, I understand that, that vibe. I understand that feeling. So that's what I've been watching. Dude, where's my jet? Uh, if you're <laughs> interested and you have... Uh, I heard one reviewer talk about it, and he goes, I don't normally condone this, but I'd watch it on two speed if you could. So there you go. If you really want to watch it, maybe make it play faster through Netflix. I feel that way about a lot of Netflix stuff. (laughs) Watch it two or more times the speed. Yeah. So what about you? What have you been watching? All right. So we talked about, it was, I believe, yesterday, we talked about A Christmas Story and A Christmas Story Christmas. And I mentioned that there are some other sequels to A Christmas Story. It runs in the family, aka My Summer Story, and the direct to video A Christmas Story 2. A Christmas Story 2, I believe, is on, I think it's on HBO Max along with A Christmas think, Story, yeah, A Christmas is. Story, Christmas. So I thought, well, what the hell? I'm watching all this other Christmas <laughs> Story stuff. I did not watch a, It Runs in the Family, but I, I did watch uh, A Christmas Story 2, the direct to video. All right. All right. So, so we're going to get to the final ranking. And I watched it. I watched it before I watched the Christmas Story Christmas. Okay. I watched them in order. I watched a Christmas Story and then a Christmas Story. Just too, in case Christmas there story was Christmas. some. No, I, 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 I knew that I knew there wasn't resolved. going to be, but but chronologically that's how they take place because Christmas Story two he's like in high school, so yeah. you know they, they make sense that way. Um, even though there's nobody in a Christmas Story two that's in the original Christmas Story or in a Christmas Story Christmas for that matter, but. I had, you know, this is kind of a common theme with us. I had like bottom of the barrel expectations for Christmas Story 2 because I, you know, it's direct to video and all that kind of stuff. I didn't think it was that bad, honestly. I mean, (laughs) is it as good as a Christmas story? Hell no. And I mean, had I had even like kind of semi good expectations, I don't know if they would have been mad. But I, for a direct to video movie, I don't think it's that bad. I thought Mm -hmm. Daniel Stern. No, he's not Darren McGavin, but I thought he's pretty good as the dad. He does, he does his best. Is he old enough to be the dad? No, I mean, not, got, not really. He got but, plastic surgery but, between this. But, you know, he's he's older than he was at Diner, obviously. Uh, but he's cranky, and he does the yeah. same kind of stuff, and he fights with the furnace. It, it has a lot of the same kind of callbacks and stuff that A Christmas Story Christmas does. But I still... You know, I didn't really like A Christmas Story Christmas very much. Um, you know, A Christmas Story is cool. It focuses, like, on the hijinks of the kids and the bullies, and he's trying to get the gun, and you'll shoot your eye out, and the Santa's, like, you know, kicks him down the slide and all that kind of fun stuff. This, they're not kids anymore, but they're still kids. They're yeah. in high school. So it's like him and Flick and Schwartz, they got to get high school jobs. So guess what? They all get jobs at Higby's department store, mm. you know, where the, you know, it all kind of ties together, but they're, they're like chasing girls and they're like trying to see girls and, and yeah. stuff like that. So it's got more kind of porkies in it. I mean, it's, it, it's not rated R, so it doesn't have any kind of nudity yeah. or any, anything like that. But, and it wasn't directed by Bob Clark who directed, you know, porkies and a Christmas story, but you know they're they're kids. I, I, I mean they're they're adolescents, so yeah. they're they're trying to sneak pe- peeks at girls and chasing girls. And he, you know, he's in love with this one girl. That's of course uh, her boyfriend is like a jock and all this kind of stuff. He's trying to buy a car because yeah, yeah. he wants to be cool and all this kind of stuff. So if you have bottom of the barrel expectations and you have HBO Max and you're already watching all this other Christmas story. I'd say give it a go. I mean, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah. Again, my expectations were like non-existent, so it was just kind of like, eh, it was, it was okay. So that's the overall lesson learned from the podcast: is is have low, have the no lowest, expectation. yeah. lowest expectations, yeah. and then most of the time the movies will exceed. Them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah. So as far as that goes, I like them in the order they released. I like. I think a Christmas story is the best, and then a Christmas story two, and then a Christmas story Christmas. I might try so. to watch a Christmas story two now. I mean, you said that. again, it ain't it ain't gonna knock your socks off. I, maybe, I guarantee you. Maybe but, have a couple eggnogs and then. Yeah. Well, that probably will make it more enjoyable. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. I mean, again, it's not. It won't kill you. 
if you decide to watch it. Um, the other two movies that I want to mention. So one, I mentioned Remember the Night as being like a TCM Blu-ray at one point. I happened to be channel surfing the, the other night and I found myself on TCM because I was looking for something to watch. And again, I, I wasn't going to put in like a disc or anything like that. Yeah. So I was, I was kind of looking uh, at streaming stuff and whatnot, and I happened to just look at what was coming on TV. And TCM was just about to start a showing of Heavenly Bodies from 1984, a Canadian film about a like a like, almost like a jazzercise aerobics kind of studio that I've seen before. That it's like a guilty pleasure kind of thing. Okay. I think the first time I ever heard about Heavenly, Bo- Heavenly Bodies is because I believe they mention it on Gilmore Girls, which I've always been a fan of. Yep. I think Lorelai and, and uh, Rory um, like the movie. Because I know they talk about that, and I think they talk about like Blame It on Rio and some other kind of 80s movies. But I remember them mentioning, I believe, if, if memory serves, they mentioned Heavenly Bodies. So the first time I caught it, I think was also on TCM. And I saw that it was coming on TCM, and I thought, okay, well, that, that's my evening sorted. I know what I'm going to watch. So <laughs> so I, I watched Heavenly Bodies, and again, I like it. It's a yeah. silly movie. Basically, this girl and her two friends, they decide to start their own kind of aerobics studio, and then she ends up getting like a cable access aerobics program. But one thing leads to another, and this evil building developer decides he wants to buy the building where they have their... Their studio is called Heavenly Bodies. Gotcha. He wants to buy the building where they have Heavenly Bodies and shut them down. And so they have like a dance-off kind of thing, yeah. like a dance marathon kind of thing. Uh, well, Peter, it's, not even, it's not even dance. It's like aerobics marathon. Peter Quill would be very, very impressed. Yeah, it's like an aerobics marathon. It's like 10 people on each team, and whoever has the most... Le- they just basically have to dance... And do aerobics. Who, last man for, standing forever. Kind of yeah, and, and and they get a break every hour for like ten minutes or something. And if you if you stop aerobicizing for more than like ten seconds, you're out. Like you have to keep going. So they're all like exhausted. It's like hands on a hard body. Yeah, kind of thing. it's an endurance. Sitting test. on the billboard yeah. or whatever. They, they shoot. They shoot jazzercisers, don't they? Uh, something like that. I don't know, but. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's just, it's a silly, fun movie. I like the soundtrack to it. It's got some obscure kind of 80s songs. Sparks is on the soundtrack. Right, there so go. that's cool. Breaking Out of Prison, a song they had. So, I, you know, I like it. It's fun. It's a fun movie. And I didn't watch it, but you know what was coming on right after uh, Heavenly Bodies? Jim Kata. Oh, there you yeah. go. What's his name? Thorg or whatever? Like yeah, the, yeah Jim Kata. <laughs> Jim Kata has made it. It's on TCM late yeah, night. Yeah, there you go. So I, that, I, but I've seen Jim Kata plenty of times. So I was like, <laughs> and plus I was going to bed. But I like Heavenly Bodies. The last film I want to mention, though, I actually did pick up a disc and put oh, it in the player oh. for once. It was, that, it was that good that it got you. <laughs> well, I didn't know if it was going to be good, uh, but it's a movie that I bought because I had heard some favorable things on it. It from 1986, maybe. I think the actual credits say 1987, but I think IMDb may be listed as 1986. I don't know. It's either 86 or 87. Filmed in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Arlington. So if you want to take World a look, at, you want to take a look at the Dallas area back in the late '80s, mid to late '80s. It's very cool, and I recognize some of the old buildings yeah, and yeah. stuff. Although you know a lot of stuff looked different, um, but it's called Positive ID. Okay, I put it in. It's it has nobody in it, like a bunch of no names. Apparently, one of the ladies that's in it went on to be on the show The Nanny with Fran Drescher, but I mm-hmm. never watched that show. But she was like one of the. I, I think she was on that show for a while. Uh, but other than her, I don't know that you would recognize anybody. And the filmographies of these people, they pretty much did nothing else. Um, for the first 10 minutes or so, I thought, what have, what did I get myself into? <laughs> like, I need to just eject, yeah, eject. The, the disc and, and take it out. But I stuck with it because, again, I had heard some favorable things on it. And, man, I really like this movie. Okay. I, like, I once it finally got going, I was like, this movie is awesome. Like, it's really cool. Uh, it's basically like a. It, so one of the critics' blurbs from from actually Janet Maslin, prominent critic, uh, she compared it to Blood Simple, and is it as good as Blood Simple? No, <laughs> it is not nearly as good as Blood Simple. It doesn't, and it also doesn't have people like Francis McDormand and Dan Hedaya in it or anything like that. But I would say overall, it's a really cool if you're into kind of, you know, low budget film noir kind of like blood simple is positive id is a really well worth checking out film 
it, I think it was shot on 16 millimeter and then transferred to 35 millimeter. Uh, but it looked fine, and the audio and everything was fine as far, as far as that goes. It was put out by Kino Lorber, who are super prolific yeah. as far as all the releases they, they put out. And they put out all kinds of things, all kinds of obscure things, things that you've heard of. So this is you know something I'd never heard of. But, I, man, I really dug this film. Once, once I finally settled in after the first 10 or 15 minutes, when the plot actually starts rolling, I thought it was really cool. Mm-hmm. And, and, again, it's just really cool to see Dallas back then yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and see, like, just the the old because there's a lot of like downtown uh, Dallas uh, shots and things like that you know and I know we, you and I are both familiar with with yep. downtown Dallas uh, so it was just cool kind of seeing all that kind of stuff cool. but yeah I, I really enjoyed it I, I liked it a lot so uh, I, I was I was very happy that I ended up sticking with it positive ID positive right. IT ID all right Can't heavenly say. bodies reminds me of physical from Apple, Apple TV Plus yeah well it's, it's essentially that I mean yeah. it's it's the same kind of thing same kind of studio and whatnot right. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a fun movie, though. All right. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Well, we've talked about what we've been watching. Now we talk about what we're going to watch. So we did a Preston Sturges written movie, Remember the Night. What did you decide to pair it with? Yeah, as I mentioned, after Remember the Night, Preston Sturges was kind of fed up with people directing his screenplay. So he said, you know what? I'm going to start writing and directing my own movies. So he made movies like The Lady Eve, which also has Barbara Stanwyck, Sullivan's Travels, Palm Beach Story. He, then he made a film called The Miracle of Morgan's Creek, which isn't a Christmas movie, although I think the final, the the, the finale of the movie basically ends yeah. up at Christmas. So I decided to pair it with Remember the Night and also because it's Preston Sturges. So yeah, Miracle of Morgan's Creek, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. All right, guys, we'll stay tuned to that. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, do all that social media stuff. And we'll see you Wednesday when we figure out what the miracle is on Morgan's Creek. They leave you hanging for quite quite a bit of the movie. <laughs> but you'll find out. We'll see you soon, guys. Have a good one. Bye.